I'm Aaron Newman, this is Hightail Custom Coach, where we restore vintage buses and convert them into custom motor coaches. Behind me is this 1952 flexible visit coach that we are just now putting the finishing touches on. There's a lot of details in this bus. We worked a lot of details into every little section. We want to show them off. You may have seen that we already did a tour of the co-pilot area, and if you haven't, you should go check that out. Today, we're going to do a tour of the bathroom. Here we are, mid-coach. The bathroom is all on the passenger side of the bus. And the reason we wanted to do that is because we had this idea from the beginning that we wanted to keep the driver's side as open as possible. We wanted you to be able to walk in and actually see down the driver's side of the bus as far back as possible. We don't have any floor-to-ceiling walls on the driver's side until you get to the bedroom. In order to do that, you gotta put everything on this side. Our thought was we make the bathroom as small as we possibly can. Basically our rule of thumb is let's make it so that it's just big enough for me to use it because I'm a pretty big guy. So if it's big enough for me, I figure it's just big enough for anybody. So here's our shower. <clears throat> it's all Corian, 100%. Uh, handmade, all, you know, a lot, of, a lot of little pieces fit together. We've got all the corners in the shower base or cove to make it nice and easy to clean. We've got a little... Uh, inserted shower caddy in the back. Uh, what's handy about the shower caddy is that it can actually be pulled out and give you access to the plumbing in behind. So if, God forbid, something ever goes wrong, we have a good way of getting at, getting to it without having to tear things apart, which is always a plus. A couple of cool things about it. The ceiling, we actually thermoformed to match the ceiling, of the radius of the ceiling of the bus. Uh, and that's a really fun process. Really, everything about Corian is fun to me. You can tool it with all your woodworking tools. You can tool it with carbide, you cut it on the table saw, take a router to it. But it doesn't have as many rules like woodworking does. So you can make all kinds of weird shapes and fit things together in odd ways. Uh, the uh, glue kits that come are like such a perfect color match that you, if you do nice work, you can literally make your seams disappear. So you can make things look as though they're molded, almost. Um, it's, a, it's a really fun and challenging material to work with, and there's just a ton of opportunities to be creative and do cool stuff. Hey, Eric. Yeah? Show them how it's done. So we didn't get too wild with this shower, but you know the fundamentals are solid in this. So we got a glass bifold shower door with a scalloped uh, glass, glass is scalloped on the shower door. Uh, aluminum framed, you know, pretty standard shower door. And I've done coaches in the past where you use a frameless uh, shower door system and it is very elegant looking. It looks beautiful. I personally don't think it's super practical. I've had them break in the past, it's a big mess, and when I send them out the door, I'm always worried that people are gonna come back with a shattered uh, shower door. Onto the bathroom now. It's all contained in this wooden box right here. See, doors mounted on a concealed hinge, got a handle here, turns, but it also has a stop here and it clicks in that way and that just gives you a little bit more privacy back here. Okay, mounted on the inside of the door, we've got these great stainless steel spring loaded coat hooks. So I figure this is a good place to hang a towel uh, or a coat. At the end of the bathroom enclosure here, we've got a pantry cabinet. Pantry cabinet is mostly being used for the galley. On the back side of the pantry, for the bathroom user, We've installed a mirror. It's it's a full length mirror, a nice big mirror for when you're getting ready for a night out on the town. So in the bathroom we have all the same finishes that you see throughout the rest of the coach. We've got the walnut, the Riftstone walnut veneer. We've got the black meganite solid surface. We use that for the backsplash and the countertops throughout. We're getting ready to do some uh, solid surface work. We're going to make a few different shaped uh, small countertop pieces that fit in the bathroom. Here we've got some templates made out of quarter inch plywood. They've all been spread to fit. And we are going to flush trim to these templates with a router with a bearing. So we're going to go ahead and get after it, and uh, we'll see you in a minute. Uh, we've 
we've got the white porcelain toilet and the white porcelain sink nice look in there the sink itself was a great find super uh, tight to the wall it doesn't stick out very far and it's and it's long so it's big enough to like wash a set of mitts in but uh, it doesn't take up the whole bathroom which it, that, that's surprisingly hard to find uh, the toilet that we use is it's a Tecma um, it's a, got a macerator built in super handy to uh, use a toilet with a macerator because the drain coming out of it is flexible it can be moved around so you, it gives you a little more play with where you where and how you mount your toilet whereas a standard toilet is just a direct drop down into a black tank less can go wrong with that but once you pick a spot you're married to it that's where it goes see the vanity lower uh, we got a little crazy with the vanity lower we got a lot of a lot of bends and a lot of swoops and and uh, we kind of pushed the limits a little bit we thought it'd be kind of nice to bring in a little bit of uh, elegance and and uh, allure to the bathroom and so we did that by flexing our cabinet building muscles here a little bit and building something a little extra fancy in a tight little space above that we have the vanity upper uh, pretty simple vanity upper uh, notable about that we made custom makeup lights uh, they're just translucent corion that we inset into the face of the cabinet they don't even necessarily jump out at you that they're lights they kind of look like just a weird little accent detail or something that you wouldn't think much of but they turn on and nice little makeup light there we shop made the uh, bypass mirrors in the vanity upper and the little tracks we made those out of the solid surface as well just kind of create a little continuity and it was here and that was fun it was a friday we've got a surprising amount of lighting in this little bathroom We'll start at the floor and work our way up. We've got a motion sensing toe kick light in here, but we have that wired to a switch on the switch plate so that by day you can cut that off. You don't need a toe kick light in the daytime. And then at nighttime you turn that back on and then when you go stumbling into the bathroom in the middle of the night, light on the floor turns on and you can see, see what you're missing. Above that we've got a, a light, an accent light that shines in the window and down onto the sink. We have a ceiling light that is an indirect lighting uh, LED strip hidden behind a valance. It kind of lights up the ceiling and just kind of makes for a nice hidden light. I like hidden light sources. I like light sources that don't jump out at you. I, I like I like a little bit of surprise when the light comes on. Yeah, I think that sums it up. That's That's the bathroom in a nutshell. This bathroom would fit in a nutshell. I think it would fit in a nutshell.